how the snowpack is leveling out this year compared to last. This light, mild winter that we've had, which has not, uh, not triggered any significant migration outside of the park. And the incredible difference it's having on wildlife. And the story of a scam too cruel to imagine. I was very heartbroken. I get my hopes up of getting a home. How can somebody do this? How this family went from homelessness to scam victims. It's all ahead now on the MTN 430 News. And changes are on the way. Here's a look outside at Billings. We're likely to see those changes in the weather start as early as tonight. It all starts with some windy conditions across the region today. Then a mix of rain and snow tonight hitting our area. And that means the winter chill is back on with colder daytime temperatures and a couple of rounds of snow. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. To break down all the changes in our weather, we're going to send it over to our chief meteorologist, Ed McIntosh, for the latest. As Andrea mentioned, we do have two rounds of snow that'll start to move in the first Tuesday night into Wednesday, maybe a little bit of a lull and then another round of snow that actually could be heavier as we start getting into Thursday and for Billings that could mean some travel impacts. Our last weather system was more foresight towards the east. This one four sides from the west, including the Billings area, so we could see some slick roads. Then a drier and warmer weekends. We'll break down the details for you with the seven day forecast in a few minutes from now. You've probably noticed you're shoveling a lot less snow this winter and Bison and Yellowstone National Park are also getting a break from it. MTN's John Shear explains how that's affecting the park's herd. All you have to do is compare pictures. A year ago, you saw this in the Gardner Basin. Now, no bison at all. A total difference. A year ago here in the Gardner Basin, more than a thousand bison were gathered. They were driven out of higher elevations in the park by deep snow that made it nearly impossible for them to find the food they depend upon. Now, well, these plains are empty. All that's here right now is a few elk gathered on a far hillside. From Roosevelt Junction to here near Slough Creek is where you'll find herds of bison gathered right now. The low snows making it much easier for them to gather food a good 30 road miles from the Gardner Basin. Uh, hunters in the Gardner area really have not had much opportunity uh, just because of these, this light, mild winter that we've had, which has not, uh, not triggered any significant migration outside of the park. A total of 85 bison may be harvested by state hunters. 40 in the Gardner area and 40 near West Yellowstone, plus five in the Gardner back country. So far this season, just 15 bison have been taken in a season that ends February 15th. Last year, tribal hunters took more than 1,200 bison, many right across the street from Bonnie Lynn's vacation rental home. When we had last year, over 1,200 gut piles in front of our driveway. Lynn, a longtime opponent of the bison hunt, says it hurts her winter rental business. I had a woman that I had stay at my cabin that worked in the park, and she said, I'm out of here. She, she was so upset. So we, I can't have guests there. She says other renters had similar experiences. I can't have people pay money to get on a plane to come here to pay rent to see this and their children? No. While this season's weather means the tribal harvest, which is not really underway yet, will be much smaller, it could grow a lot again next year. It's all dependent on the weather. In Yellowstone National Park, John Shearer, MTN News. Most of us probably believe we'd never fall victim to any kind of scam. Even so, the Montana Department of Consumer Affairs says it kept Montanans from being duped some $800,000 last year after fielding almost 1,000 scam complaints. But keeping away from scams is nearly impossible. As Jill Valley explains, that's why it often falls on you to protect yourself. I was very heartbroken. I get my hopes up of getting a home. How can somebody do this? Ruby and Mike Thomas thought their days of being homeless were over. They saved enough to buy a camper, 
which then caught fire and burned. So Mike turned to Facebook Marketplace. I posted that my wife and I are homeless and we're looking for a place to rent. Someone claiming to be a local realtor sent him a message saying she could help. 1600 a month. Um, it's a house up in the rattlesnake. It gave me the address. I looked at it. I, I mean, it was beautiful. And seemed legit. This was a 10-page lease agreement. But then... Something's not right. She's talking to me at 4 o'clock in the morning. Real estates don't, aren't open at 4 o'clock in the morning. And when they went to see the house, of course, it was not for rent. You just totally scammed us. And we are not happy. And the $2,400 they sent through Zell gone. They had obviously already had access to my online banking. Alicia lost thousands when she got a call from her bank telling her an account was compromised. She had to punch in some codes to the fraud department so they could protect her. Well, they called while she was busy, distracted at work, but then they said the words wire transfer. Now you have my undivided attention and I'm panicked and I'm worried. Alicia is smart. But these scammers know the tricks. They knew exactly what to say and what to do. And it's very, very psychological. To wear me down like that takes a good psychological process. $25,000 pulled out of her account and gone. We have long cons and short cons. That's Missoula County Detective Glenville Keedy, and these are the crimes he goes after. Last year, just me alone, I investigated $1.7 million in fraud in Missoula County. That is the devastation factor. The concerning thing is that these scammers can reach out through a phone call, through a text, through an email, through a website you frequent. But there's one universal goal. Some of these are, they're, they're working out of boiler rooms in, in India where this is their job, is to call people and convince you that they deserve your money more than you do. Then how do we defend ourselves against savvy scammers? The best way to prevent this is to think it through. Verify everything yourself. People think the number that appears on their phone, that's some sort of sacrosanct information. Any number can be spoofed. They'll go on fear or they'll go on excitement. Another line of defense, check the Missoula County Facebook page for news on the latest scams. But if you do get ripped off, report it. Alicia is still fighting for justice two years later. And Mike and Ruby Thomas have a place to stay thanks to their church. They're trying to stay strong. Even though we lost $2,400, it's, it's a trial, but it's also a testament that we're still pressing on. In Missoula, Jill Valley, MTN News. Detective Cuddy says scammers target individuals and businesses with one Montana business recently being scammed out of $400,000. For more suggestions on how to protect yourself, visit KTVQ.com. More than five dozen types of cheese and other dairy products sold on store shelves across Montana are being recalled over listeria concerns. The recall started last week with Rizzo Lopez Foods recalling dozens of their dairy products. The affected cheeses and yogurt produced under a baker's dozen of brand names. Well, the recall now includes products like enchiladas, bean dips, dressings, and sauces. At least two deaths have been linked to the recalled items. Those products were sold at stores, including Albertsons and Costco. We've been reporting it for a while, the rise of fentanyl overdoses in Montana. It's an issue health and public policymakers know won't be solved easily. Tonight, our Joe St. George has a look at one idea in Congress to save lives. Imagine every year losing a city the size of Dayton, Ohio, or Billings, Montana, to overdose deaths. But that's what's happening on our country. Around 110,000 Americans die from an unintentional overdose death each and every year, with fentanyl playing a major role. Now the question is, will Washington do anything meaningful in the near future to save lives? Scripps News has chronicled the loss of life from overdoses for years. I just don't want anybody else to feel the pain that I feel. Ursula Picciano telling us the story of how her grandchild accidentally died from a fentanyl poisoning, one of hundreds of similar deaths involving children discovered by our Scripps News investigative team in recent months. Stephanie Robinson from Louisiana has a similar story about her grandson Mitchell. I miss my grandbaby. 
But will any of this heartache actually result in policy changes in Washington? There is a chance with something known as the Fend Off Fentanyl Act, which declares the trafficking of fentanyl across borders a national emergency. It imposes new sanctions on entities connected to the drug trade. It gives the Treasury Department new authority to flag fentanyl-related banking transactions, and it gives the Biden administration access to new funding streams to increase seizures. 90 percent of the drugs like fentanyl are coming through legal and commercial ports of entry. Dr. Rul Gupta is director of the National Drug Control Policy under President Biden. He says most fentanyl or the chemicals to make it is entering the U.S. not through cracks in the southern border, but legal ports of entry. Many times shipping containers or trucks entering the U.S. are not scanned. We need to make sure that there's proper technology, including drug detection machines, as well as officers. Prior to this administration, when you look at the numbers, only 2% of the private vehicular traffic and 17% of the cargo traffic was ever scanned by a machine. Getting the technology, though, isn't cheap. In addition to the Fendoff Fentanyl Act, the Biden administration has asked Congress for over a billion dollars to address the issue. Of course, whether or not anything passes is very much to be determined. For now, the legislation related to fentanyl has been inserted into bills related to funding Ukraine and Israel, making the issue more partisan. One thing is clear, though, the number of Americans impacted by overdoses, sadly, only continues to rise. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. In 2023, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration seized a record 500 pills from Montana alone. That equals nearly 18 kilograms. A new video shows the rescue of two hostages in Gaza, as well as Israeli airstrikes in the area of Rafa near that operation. Israel freed two Israeli Argentine hostages held by Hamas in a ferocious rescue operation. The fight also killed 67 Palestinians, where a million civilians have sought refuge from months of bombardments. The hostages are among 250 people seized during the October 7th raid by Hamas militants. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is back in the hospital following symptoms pointing to an emergent bladder issue. The Pentagon says Austin transferred duties to his deputy secretary. He was criticized last month for failing to disclose a cancer diagnosis and hospitalizations to even the president. Still to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2, we're taking a look back at how railroad transportation came to Carbon County. That story is ahead. And changes in the weather, of course, they are coming. Ed is going to let us know what to expect in his full seven-day forecast. It's ahead.